I love hair grease. I love petrolatum. I really don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not finna stop using it because people say that I should. Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, popularly known as Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Now I'm sure that was a pretty shocking declaration if you've never been here before, but I love hair grease, aka petrolatum based sealants, and I'm finally showing you how I use them in my regimen. So without any further ado, let's get right into this video. I'm trying to keep my intros nice and short for y'all. Now before we do, please of course be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. Please be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. Comment down below, let me know what you think of how I use grease, let me know what kind of sealants you use, and last but never ever least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Now if you'd like to see me flourishing from grease usage, be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can see my awesome photos and support my photography or whatever. And also follow me on Twitter if you'd like to relate to me more easily. I'm a lot more active on there when it comes to actually talking to people. So y'all, this is going to be a very detailed video. Please make sure you watch everything and do not skip any part of this video. I'm going to share my entire process as well as the information behind why I do things the way that I do them. Now I know that some of you are here because you've seen my video about the myths that the natural hair community has perpetuated about Greece. <laughs> And I know that some of you are here just because you're trying to see how a girl with a lot of hair be using grease to grow it. So welcome. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it right up here for your viewing pleasure. Be sure to open it up in another window so that you can view it after viewing this video. The two videos go hand in hand, really. Now, if we're going to talk about hair grease, we must first begin with what is a grease? Hair grease is a sealant that primarily consists of petrolatum and other additives. Mineral oil, lanolin, and other extremely heavy sealants might also comprise your typical hair grease. When I refer to hair grease, I'm typically referring to sealants where the base is comprised of petrolatum. There are many different types of greases, but again, I use the ones where the foundation is petrolatum, aka petroleum jelly. Now, what exactly is petrolatum? We're going to cut to a little informative clip here so you guys can find out exactly what it is and what it does. Petrolatum, also known as petroleum jelly, white petrolatum, soft paraffin, or multi-hydrocarbon, is a semi-solid hydrocarbon. It was originally promoted as a topical ointment for its healing properties. It is a byproduct of the crude oil refining process and was first discovered in Titusville, Pennsylvania in 1859. Workers noticed a paraffin-like material forming on the oil rigs. Though they did not like it due to the rig malfunctions it caused, they used it on cuts and burns because they believed it hastened healing. A related product is mineral oil. Though the term mineral oil is very imprecise and over the centuries has been used to mean a number of things, in the modern era, mineral oil most often refers to a liquid byproduct of the crude oil refining process. It is therefore related to petrolatum, but please note that it is not a derivative of petrolatum. After petroleum jelly became a staple in medicine cabinets, it garnered a reputation as a sort of cure-all. People used it for everything from toenail fungus to rashes, chest colds to diaper rash. Research and a better scientific understanding of how petrolatum actually affects the body has debunked many of the perceived mythical properties of petrolatum. How did that black paraffin-like material on the oil rigs become the petrolatum we are familiar with today? Well, you see, Robert Cheesebro, the founder of the Vaseline brand and the individual that discovered petrolatum, previously attempted to distill fuel from sperm whale oil. As the petroleum industry eclipsed similar industries, including sperm whale fuel, Cheesebro traveled to Titusville, took the paraffin-like substance, colloquially termed rod wax, left on the rigs, and further distilled it into the light-colored gel we know as petrolatum. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Vaseline brand today as it is the front runner when it comes to the production of petroleum jelly. The brand's prominence is a mark of Cheese Bros success. Petrolatum is an excellent occlusive and lubricant. It reduces friction and creates a barrier between whatever surface it is on and the environment. Petrolatum is used in many antibacterial creams because of its ability to occlude bacteria and other impurities. Its impermeability also makes it great at keeping moisture in the skin and hair. In hair care, this is its primary usage as a sealant. The lubrication also helps prevent single strand knots and friction that can eventually lead to splits and breakage. 
Contrary to popular belief, petrolatum is also excellent at protecting against pollutants, microorganisms, and other foreign particles. Many complain that it dirties their hair. Hair will get dirty over time regardless, but the complaint may actually be from the greasiness of the product because petrolatum actually helps maintain the cleanliness of the hair and scalp through its occlusion. It is important to note that prior to using it in these ways, a wound must be properly cleaned, the skin must be wet to damp or adequately moisturized, and the hair must also be wet to damp or adequately adequately moisturized. The efficacy of petrolatum is significantly reduced if the hair and skin are void of moisture. The biggest controversy surrounding petrolatum is the alleged potential presence of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, also known as PAHs. These are contaminants that can remain in the petrolatum if it is not properly refined. These contaminants are linked to cancer. 14 PAHs are possible carcinogens and there is one that is a known carcinogen. A study on Long Island, New York found that these women with high levels of PAH DNA adducts had a 50% greater risk of breast cancer. The formation of PAH DNA adducts, an indicator of PAH exposure, is linked to cancer development. I'm going to cite cosmeticsinfo.org by leaving a quote on the screen for us to read. Misinformation circulating on the internet about the petrolatum used in cosmetic and personal care products claims that there is a risk of contamination from polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, cancer-causing chemicals found in crude oil and its by-products. Such claims are simply not true. The petrolatum used in cosmetics and personal care products is a highly refined grade that must meet very strict safety standards, which includes limits on the content of PAHs. The purity of cosmetic grade petrolatum is also evident from its allowed uses in the U.S. as an over-the-counter skin protectant and in over-the-counter ophthalmic and anorectal drugs. Please make of this information what you will. Other concerns are more cosmetic and include pore clogging, dryness, induction, inability to remove, and etc. I've debunked those myths in my Five Lies the Natural Hair Community Lied About Grease video, which I've already referenced in the cards. You can navigate to it by clicking in the top right corner or viewing the description box down below. I'd like to leave you all with this direct quote from Paula's Choice. Seeing as one argument against Grease is that the black community is being strategically targeted, I'd like to note that this is a brand created by a woman and the original audience was fellow women. Vaseline is pure petrolatum and petrolatum is a rich emollient and FDA approved skin protectant. It is one of the best ingredients for dry to very dry skin, including around the eyes. Although derived from crude oil, thus making petrolatum a natural ingredient, it is highly purified prior to being used in cosmetics so there's no risk of exposure to unwanted chemicals. For some unknown and unsubstantiated reason, and despite solid research to the contrary, petrolatum has attained a negative image in regard to skin. Topical application of petrolatum can help replenish, soothe, and beautifully moisturize skin's outer layer. It's widely considered safe and highly effective. Extensive clinical data has shown petrolatum to be a gentle ingredient. In conclusion, petrolatum is an excellent lubricant and it aids moisturization and moisture retention if used correctly. If you insist on being extremely cautious, you can also look up hair pomades and skin products with petrolatum and check if they are EU compliant and or FDA approved. EU compliance is more difficult and companies have to provide a full record of their petrolatum refinement history in order to meet the mark. If you're concerned about ingredients aside from petrolatum, use Vaseline or another highly refined petrolatum and add your desired oils and butters. I hope this summary clears up a lot of confusion. I made a video complaining about the attitude of the natural hair community, the bandwagoning, the chastising, and the continued circulation of misinformation, which I will link for you all to check out after this video. We need to stop spouting and start researching, period. Now that we know what the type of hair grease I use is made of, we're going to look at how I use it in my regimen. Now these are the ways in which I use hair grease on my hair. After shampooing, conditioning, and deep conditioning my hair, I begin the moisturizing process, which includes my sealant, petrolatum based product aka grease if you all would like to see my wash day routine please leave any purple emoji down below and comment that you want to see it i first begin by filling my spray bottle with hot water and a few drops of tea tree oil now the temperature of the water is not a scalding heat it's more of a moderate heat so let's say a bit cooler than your average cup of tea now the application of this water is going to ensure that my scalp and hair remain hydrated that I'm fortified against bacteria and fungus and my hair is ready to accept the product. 
Now my hair is extremely low porosity, so if I douse my hair in cold water, my cuticles will lay completely flat and they will not allow products to enter the hair shaft. This for me is the way that I ensure my hair is ultra moisturized. I coax my cuticle open through the usage of this hot water. Tea tree oil is an antiseptic and antifungal essential oil. Now it's very potent, so it's important to remember to use only a few drops. Now I'm currently in Nigeria, so the tea tree oil is essential when it comes to killing microorganisms in the water, as well as the ones that could potentially be on my scalp and my hair. Now following the filling of my spray bottle, I actually start the process, for real. <laughs> now I wash my hair in twists and I keep the sections. I don't remove my twists unless my hair is extremely gunky and I need to do so to shampoo properly. When I'm out of the shower, the twists are still intact. And to begin the process, I simply separate out one twist and clip the rest of my hair up and out of the way. I then take down the twist. Following that, I spray my scalp and my hair with a generous amount of water from my spray bottle, remembering to focus primarily on my hair, especially the ends. I don't want my scalp to be too damp because my scalp is very sensitive. And even though the tea tree inside the water counteracts bacteria and fungus, I want to be sure that I'm not giving my scalp a reason to produce mildew and cause itchies, become irritated, etc., etc. Now with the single twist that I've separated that has been taken down, I part it line by line and apply my sulfur 8 to my scalp. I keep the layer pretty thin. I make sure not to overdo it. Now as I'm doing this, I'm either using sulfur 8 or I'm using my modified version of sulfur 8. If you all would like a video on the things that I mix into my sulfur 8 to make it more potent and more soothing for my scalp, please let me know. Now if there's one thing I don't forget to do as I'm sectioning line by line, it's to grease the perimeter. After completing the line by line greasing, I make sure I grease around the twist. I then apply my favorite leave-in to the body of my hair. In the drier months, which would be winter and dry season, I make sure to use my Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In. It's the only line from Shea Moisture that works for my hair. And I don't know what they put in it, whether they put Wishcraft. It keeps my hair extremely moisturized, which is almost unheard of. My hair is very much prone to dryness, especially in this dry Northern Nigerian weather. In more humid months, I use Obia Naturals or Cantu. Now I tend to rotate several of the products from their line. However, I'm thinking that I might find a replacement for Cantu. I actually am interested in trying the main choice, so if you all have a recommendation for a good leave-in from there, let me know in the comments down below. And also, let me know what other leave-ins you've found favorable for very, very low porosity hair. Now all of the products that I do use will be in the description box down below, so you guys can check that out if you'd like to purchase. After applying the leave-in, I typically apply my carrot oil or my almond oil from the root to the tip of my hair, avoiding my scalp. I then apply grease to the ends of my hair. Now for me, the ends are the last three to four inches. I want to make sure that my ends are fortified against any kind of breakage or damage so that I can retain as much length as possible. Alternately, I may apply the grease to the entire length of my hair. Now if I do this, I typically omit the oil or I'll mix some in with my grease, making it a bit more malleable, but really it depends on how I'm feeling. Now if I'm not in the mood for something as heavy as grease, I may only use oil and omit a heavier sealant altogether, or I will use my special shea butter mix along with the oil, but I typically only use the shea butter on my ends, the same way I use the grease. Now nine times out of 10 though, I will probably choose the grease because I've seen the long-term benefits of something that heavy sealing in moisture. Now I know that some of you will be surprised I still use other sealants, even though I use grease, right? But I'm a very practical babe. If I like something, I'm going to keep it in my regimen. If I've seen the benefits of something, there's no reason for me to discontinue use because I've seen the benefits of something else. Ultimately, I'm going to find a place for the things that I really, really like in my regimen, unless they can actually literally be replaced 100% of the time. Now the second way I use grease on my hair is typically done when I'm wearing cornrows, braids, or long-term twists. Now I'm not talking about added hair, I'm talking about my own hair. I don't really use grease when I have extensions in. 
A typical wash day for me is what I touched on in the previous method. I love shampoo, but I don't always use it when I'm refreshing my hair. Now, a spray bottle doesn't always work for me if I'm re-moisturizing. Since I'm extremely low porosity, sometimes I just want to completely drench my hair in water and let the water really soak in so that my hair will be truly hydrated. During this time, I use my favorite conditioner, which is Aussie Moist. <laughs> if you know, you know, and I apply it to my hair focusing on the ends. Now I never put conditioner on my scalp. That's a huge no-no for someone with a scalp as sensitive as mine. I only apply it to my hair. And I know that some of you would say, girl, you're co-washing, but I'm actually not doing this to cleanse my hair. I'm merely doing it to re-add moisture to my hair. Now due to the properties of the conditioner, there's definitely going to be a bit of cleansing action going on but it's not going to be as deep as a shampoo, of course. The conditioner will certainly allow some of the grease and the other buildup on my hair to slide off. Now, anyway, that short, somewhat digression aside, after doing this, I rinse my hair with moderately hot, AKA toasty water. As soon as I alight from the shower, I apply a generous amount of leave-in all over my hair a bit of oil all over my hair, and I slather my ends with grease. I make sure that my coils are defined. That's how much grease I apply. Now this is something I actually do to my loose hair, my twists, my braids, and my cornrows. I did mention previously that water ball doesn't do it for me all the time because I'm extremely low porosity, but there are times when this will be effective enough until I'm able to either shampoo or just soak my hair. Now I first begin by of course filling my spray bottle with moderately hot water and a few drops of tea tree oil. I spray my hair and my scalp with a generous amount of water, concentrating most of the spray on my hair. I then apply one of my favorite leave-ins, and again, the leave-in that I've been reaching for most is that Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In. Now, they should literally sponsor me because I'm the poster child for disliking them, but I love this particular product, so you can't really doubt it. But y'all, that product has changed my life. I can't recommend it enough, but anyway. After applying my leave-in, again, I apply either my carrot oil or almond oil from the root to the tip, avoiding my scalp. I then apply the grease to the ends of my hair, the last three to four inches. Now with this method, it's important to note that I'm not as heavy handed on the body of my hair if my hair is indeed free. I'm only fairly heavy on the ends and that's because I'm very focused on preserving them. And aside from that, my ends just require a bit more TLC. Now I've touched on this a bit already, but this is a quick fix for me. I do not do this unless I intend to re-moisturize my hair deeply in the shower or totally shampoo and deep condition my hair within a few days. Now this is a given. I want my edges to be popping and I don't skip this no matter what state my hair is in. Now I first begin by filling my spray bottle and at this point I know you guys know the drill. I then spray my edges with a very generous amount of water and I don't hold back. Now my edges, it's like my edges are more low porosity than the rest of my head, which I don't understand. They're extremely resistant to moisture. So I need to be generous and take my time if I want them to be truly hydrated. That's just the bottom line, y'all. Do y'all have this problem with your edges? Are your edges very resistant to moisture? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> For my edges, I use my Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In exclusively. I don't play around with my edges, y'all. Again, I don't know which kind witchcraft, which kind juju they put inside that thing, but it retains moisture like nothing I've ever used. And I sincerely do love the other leave-ins that I rotate in my regimen with the Shea Moisture. Bam, it's on a different level. Following that, I apply my Sulfur 8 to my edges, either the regular formula or my special concoction. Now, those are all the ways I use grease on my hair. We're going to move on to how I use it on my scalp, which is pretty straightforward. But I would just like to highlight prior to us moving on to that, that if you notice, every time I'm using grease, I make sure my hair is extremely hydrated and deeply moisturized. Now for me, water that is retained in the shaft is hydration. But in order for my hair to be properly moisturized, personally, I need to apply a leave-in. Water is not enough for my hair to retain that hydration. Now, if you want to use grease, that's really important to bear in mind and I'm going to reference my myths video once more. I pointed out that people oftentimes say that grease leads to dry hair, but that's only if you're using it incorrectly. You cannot 
use grease on dry hair. I repeat, do not use grease on your dry hair. It will keep water out as well as it keeps the water in. So if you want your hair to benefit from using grease, it's to ensure that your hair is deeply, deeply moisturized and you're using a very, very effective leave-in. Some people are fine with grease and water and I may give that a shot, but personally, I like adding my leave-ins for that extra layer of protection. And aside from that, my hair is prone to dryness. I don't want to take any chances. And I'm in an extremely dry environment in the dry season. My skin is even extremely dry right now. So yeah, I just like to play it safe and use a leave-in. Now the way that I apply grease to my scalp is extremely straightforward. There's really nothing crazy about it. It's very simple and it's been one of the best decisions I could have ever made to be very frank. My scalp used to itch constantly. I used to struggle with itchy scalp and dry scalp, but no more. The grease has not only helped my scalp to retain moisture, it's completely eliminated the itchies from my scalp. Like I'm sitting here and my scalp is 120% A-OK, -okay, which is really fantastic and something that I have not experienced in a long time time now since i've already described how i apply the grease to my scalp on wash day i'm going to move on to the other way i apply it now you all know how i refresh my scalp and my hair and that's either wet it with a spray bottle or do it in the shower i then apply my sulfur eight in one of three ways i apply it to pre-existing parts maybe in cornrows or twists or braids i apply it to my fingers and massage it into all the parts of my scalp or I create parts of my hair and I apply line by line. Now, if my hair is loose, I typically don't reapply any kind of grease to my scalp. There's no need because I'm probably going to wash it within seven to 10 days anyway. And personally, I like to wash my hair frequently. For me, frequently is like every week because I don't want to give my scalp the opportunity to have issues. I'm extremely meticulous about my scalp health at this point. I really cannot come and kill myself. I cannot suffer y'all. Now for sulfur eight, I persist in its use because I love the sulfur inside of it. Now sulfur has been fantastic because it's been keeping my scalp from itching as I've already stated, and it's kept my scalp from becoming a breeding ground for fungus and bacteria. Now, if you didn't already know, dandruff is caused by fungus which is why sulfur-8 is typically recommended when people are suffering from dandruff. Now, I don't think I've ever had dandruff, but I've definitely had dry scalp, and I've probably had excessive fungal growth on my scalp because of the way that it's itched previously. I do not use any other type of grease on my scalp. However, I do use oil on my scalp from time to time. Currently, I've run out of my oil mixture. When I remake it, I will use that along with the grease, probably alternating, doing what I feel like doing, depending on the season, doing whatever I feel like doing, depending on how lazy I am. But basically those two things, especially the grease, have kept my scalp really healthy and really, really happy. Now, a disclaimer for all of you. On my previous video about hair grease, a lot of people were like, oh, grease makes my scalp itchy, blah, 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 blah. I hate it, it makes my hair feel terrible. And that's totally fine. Grease is not necessarily for everyone and not everyone is going to benefit from using grease. Now, with people that already produce a lot of sebum from their scalps, typically it's advised that they do not put any oil or any kind of grease on their scalps. Now for someone like me that suffers from dry scalp, grease has been really helpful for helping me retain moisture and again, keep the itch at bay. So it's worked wonderfully for me. As much as I love grease, I of course recognize that it cannot work for everyone and that's totally fine. I'm merely letting you guys know that this is something that works for me and based on fact, it's literally not that bad for you or your hair. So if you've used grease with success, then continue to use it. Do not be deterred by what the natural hair people are saying. If you've never used grease, consider giving it a try if you're suffering from very dry hair and you can't seem to keep moisture in your hair. If you can't use grease, please don't use it just because I'm telling you that it's really awesome. But for those of you that can use it, I hope that you do with great success. Now, if you've made it this far, I'd like for you to drop a blue emoji down below. Let me know what you think of the video and comment. Let me know how you use grease in your regimen. Is there anything that I've missed? Because obviously I'm only one person and I can only know so much. So I'd love to hear from you all. 
But yeah, again, real OGs, leave a blue emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was extremely helpful. I hope that the information presented to you satisfied you and fed your brain and opened up a world of potential for you and hair grease. Anywho, thank you all so much. I love all of you and I'll see you in my next video. Oh, Grease is still the best thing that's happened to me.